Hello, my name is Michael, and welcome to Tour Guide Talks. This is a special tour guide talk with a really cool demonstration at the end, so stay tuned. Today I'd like to tell you about one of the most ingenious inventions ever to be used on military airplanes, the self-sealing fuel tank. These tanks could be shot through with bullets and not leak fuel. Now, contrary to what you may see in many TV shows and movies, a fuel tank will not instantly blow up when you shoot it with a regular bullet. But the bullet will make a hole. The leaking fuel or gas fumes could ignite if they come in contact with the hot surface of an airplane's engine or electrical system. Also, a leaking fuel tank could make a plane literally run out of gas and crash. George J. Murdoch was granted a U.S. patent for a self-sealing fuel tank covering in 1921. And while Murdoch's design was modified and improved over the years, the basic concept remained the same into the Second World War. Many U.S. Navy World War II warplanes, like the Avenger torpedo bomber here at the Intrepid, were equipped with self-sealing tanks. This helped give American aircraft a survivability advantage over enemy planes. Here's how a self-sealing fuel tank works. The tank is basically a large rubber box that is shaped to fit within a rigid space inside the wings or body of the airplane. The walls of the tank consist of three layers. The innermost layer, which lines the tank, is made of vulcanized rubber. Vulcanized rubber is unaffected by the fuel inside the tank. The middle layer consists of untreated natural rubber. The outermost layer is fabric, which protects the rubber layers and helps give the tank rigidity and shape. When a bullet penetrates the tank, it will puncture two holes. Fuel will start to leak through the holes, and that's when the magic happens. Remember that middle layer of untreated natural rubber? Well, when untreated natural rubber comes in contact with a petroleum-based liquid, like airplane fuel, it gets gummy and swells. The sticky, expanding rubber fills the holes and stops the leaks. To demonstrate how a self-sealing tank works, I have gathered together some safe and inexpensive materials that you can find at any supermarket, so you can try this at home. You'll need a pitcher of water, some food coloring, two quart-sized zip seal plastic bags, a disposable baby diaper, a pair of scissors, a roll of wide transparent sealing tape, and a very sharp pencil. Let's get started. To stand in for fuel, I have water. I've added a few drops of green food coloring to make it easier to see. For fuel tanks, we have the zip seal style bags. I'll leave one alone to serve as a control. The other will be our self-sealing tank. To simulate the layer of natural rubber, we'll use a water-absorbing polymer powder known as hydrogel. You can buy hydrogel from online suppliers or from some plant supply stores, but it's also found in most disposable baby diapers, so that's where I got mine. If you cut open a diaper with scissors, you'll expose a fluffy layer covered with white granules. That's the hydrogel. Rub it off the diaper and collect it into a pile. You'll only need about two teaspoonfuls of powder for this demo. Put a little flattened pile of hydrogel on the outside of the zip seal style bag and seal it over with a few strips of sealing tape. For the sake of this demonstration, it won't be necessary to cover the entire bag with hydrogel since we know exactly where our simulated bullet hole will go. Pour some fake fuel into both bags and seal them up. Have an assistant hold the untreated bag over the wash basin. Our sharp pencil will act as a bullet. Puncture the bag from below. As you can see, it leaks like crazy. Now let's try the bag with the self-sealing layer. Same as before, puncture the bag from below, but do it right through the layer of hydrogel. As you can see, the bag will begin to leak, but as the water wets the powder, the powder swells to fill the hole just like the natural rubber layer in a real self-sealing fuel tank. The self-sealing fuel tank goes to show you that tough, even life-threatening problems can often be solved with simple materials and a little ingenuity. Thanks for watching. Keep experimenting and exploring, and be sure to visit us online at intrepidmuseum.org.